Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing you how you can create resizable frame templates that scale to fit any size device. So iPads, tablets, phones, pretty much anything. As you can see here, I have four video inputs of myself, one in each quadrant, and then this nice two by two border that goes around the outside. And we're in a resizable window, so if I drag it and resize, then you'll see it scales and fits accordingly. Everything stays pinned in place, and it looks pretty sweet no matter what size device you have. If you go too thin, then it will mess up a little bit, but that's only because there's not enough space for the video input, and it's the same if you go this way. But for the most part, any device that is of a standard dimension will work just fine. The frames I'll be using in this video are actually part of a template package that I made. It's available on Gumroad if you wanna check that out. The links will be in the description down below. We have this one here. Uh, there's a couple of different thicknesses to the borders. I have a three by three grid. There's some that you can set up for animation as well. So yeah, check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, we'll jump straight into the video and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, here we are in a new project and the first thing I need to do is add some frames that I'll be working with. So if we scroll over, you'll see I already have a few templates set up. We have our full frame here at 2.5% thickness. So as you can see, the border itself takes up 2.5% of the total screen space. I have the same here for 5%, so it's a little bit thicker in case you wanted to add maybe some animation in here or a few other effects. I have my 2x2 two two grid at 2.5% and also at 5%. And then there's a three by three grid, which fits nine cameras. So I'm gonna start out with the full frame 2.5%, just to show you the simplest version. And then we'll add some more cameras and I'll show you what it looks like with a two by two grid as well. So I have my full frame here, and now we're gonna add some objects to the scene. So I'm gonna hit add object. We're gonna add a rectangle that will appear nested inside of this canvas. We're gonna fill the width and fill the height. And then what I'm gonna do is just duplicate that two times. I'm gonna rename this one here background, the second one's gonna be person, and the third one's gonna be frame. And in terms of layers, this is the order you want. So our background sitting on the top means that it's actually the lowest layer underneath everything else. Then we have our person sitting above that, and finally the frame, which will sit on top of everything else. So now we're gonna add materials. So for the background, we're gonna add one. I'm gonna rename that to background mat. And we're gonna do the same thing for person. So add a new material, person mat, oh, mat. And then the same thing for our frame. So create new material and we'll call this one frame mat. Now I'm gonna control select all three of our materials and change the shader type from standard to flat. And after that, we're gonna come up here to the camera, create a texture extraction for our camera texture and do another one here for the person segmentation. And those will both appear down here in the assets panel. Now we're gonna select our person material and I'm gonna add the camera texture here. And then we're gonna check this box for the alpha and I'm gonna add our person segmentation into that texture down here. You still won't be able to see anything, but that's because our frame is actually sitting on top right now. So I'm gonna check the alpha box here. You can actually add the frame to the main texture under the shader properties, but I prefer to add it to the alpha just because it gives you more opportunities to mess around with it. That's also why it's a white frame rather than a black one by default. So we'll check that box for the alpha and then we'll add our full frame here. And you'll be able to see it very, very slightly around the edge. It's a little bit easier now if I change the color to black so it's more pronounced. And you can see our guy is there, but he's a little bit shiny, a little bit of light going around the edge of him. So we're gonna head down here to our person segmentation mask. And I'm just gonna adjust this edge softness. So I'm gonna bring that down to around 95%. And I'm gonna increase the mask size to around 2.6. And you'll see it smooths things out a little bit. You can also go to your background material at this point and just change the color to something that's a little bit easier to see, kind of distinguish between all the different layers that we have. So what I'm gonna do next is control select all three of the rectangles we have, and I'm gonna adjust the pinning. So if you look under the properties tab, you'll see pinning. And right now it's pinned to the top and to the left. But we actually wanna just click this one and click this one and make sure that it's pinned to all four directions. And you can see a preview of how that works. So now when it scales, it will scale accordingly. And if I change this over to a resizable window, then when it scales, the frame itself and the person underneath will all fit perfectly. There'll be no glitching out, nothing will be off center or outside of the frame. So that's it, that's pretty simple, right? Now we're gonna add another frame, a few more cameras, and I'll show you what this looks like with a two by two setup. So now we're gonna scroll over here. I'm gonna drag in my two by two grid at 2.5% thickness, and I'm gonna replace the frame material here. So if we drop down this alpha box and just replace the original frame, the full frame 2.5 with this new two by two grid, then you'll see it works just like that. Everything's uh, still layered over the top, but we only have one camera, so it looks kind of weird right now. You can still resize it though, and the cross will stay in place. Everything is proportional. But if we wanted to, we can control select our background and our person. 
And if we switch these over to relative, because they always seem to change themselves automatically, relative works best because it's in percentages. So by default, it's set at 100%. I'll switch this back to like an iPhone so that it's all standard sized. And now we can drop this down from 100% to 50% on the width, 50% on the height, and it's now pinned in the top left corner. So now we can just duplicate our background and our person by hitting Command D. I'm gonna drag this one underneath and I'll rename it background two, person two. We select our background and add a new material layer for it. I'll rename this one background to matte. And we'll change the shader type from standard to flat switch it out to be, I don't know, a nice green maybe. And now we can select both of them and using these alignment tools up here, we can align this one to be in the top right. And we also need to change the pinning because all the properties have carried over from this original rectangle. So the top left one is pinned to the top and to the left. So this one here needs to be pinned to the top and to the right. So I'm gonna click that one and I'm gonna unclick this one. Oh, and you also wanna make sure that they're in relative position to one another so that they're scaled proportionally. So now if I switch over to a resizable window, then I can drag this and it will scale pretty nice. Everything still fits, nothing's like jumping off the screen. Switch back to the iPhone. So now we can just duplicate that again. Background three, drag it underneath, create a new material for it. Background three, matte and change the shader type from standard to flat. Select a new color, we'll do a nice pink. And now we just need to move them by control selecting them and using these alignment tools here. It's already up in the top right because we've duplicated our second one, which was in the top right as well. So if we just hit this one, it'll bring it down to the bottom right. We can adjust the pinning here so that it's pinned to the right and to the bottom and unpin that top one. And once again, you wanna switch this out to relative scale so it's 50 percent 50 percent on the relative and we do the same thing one more time so command d to duplicate drag that underneath create a new material for our background four background for matte change the shader type from standard to flat change the color to i don't know orange maybe and then you just want to align them so this one's already in the bottom right we're just going to align it to the left and then pin it to the left and to the bottom and make sure that everything's relatively scaled. And now if I go into a resizable window, then you'll see everything fits, everything's proportional to one another. It all stays within the bounds of the device, which is awesome. It looks like Hollywood Squares right now. If you wanna add even more interactions to this, then you can open up your patch editor. We can go into the library, patch assets. You can grab a patch that changes things like the color. So I'm gonna use this color cycles patch as an example, import that into our scene. We can drag that inside the patch editor and then select one of our background materials. We'll do background two, this top right one here. And if we connect that up, then you'll see we now have a little bit of a flashing color change sequence. Oh, I'll adjust the speed, the duration to be 7.5 seconds. Set it to be a random start, reverse. And you will wanna, if you're doing something like this, make sure that the default color is white so that it doesn't mess up the way that it cycles through colors. And there you go, pretty sweet, huh? I'm just gonna copy this over to the other three and I'll be back in a second. And there we go. You'll see now I have four color cycles patches. Each one is connected to a different background material. I've changed the original colors that we set back to white. So now it's cycling through. I have a random start and a reversal on each one. They're all set to be 7.5 seconds. So it should cycle through each one randomly. You shouldn't get too much of a lineup. So maybe if I hit refresh, this one will go out of sync with it. There you go. So. That's pretty much it. It's not the most complicated effect, but people have been having trouble with it. I made a few videos about this in the past, but I didn't really mention the pinning elements. So uh, when people were testing it on their own devices, it kind of messed things up. But hopefully you found some of this video useful. Uh, if you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. It does help out the channel. And also don't forget, I do have a Gumroad page where the frame templates that I showed off here and a few more are available for purchase. They're pretty cheap, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. There are a bunch of other filters on there as well, and anytime you make a purchase, it directly supports me. So I really do appreciate it. With all that being said, I'm gonna bring this video to a close. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.